you really Arden's cousin? Yeah. You could, do you come out to shows a lot? False. Uh, true. That's my head. My, that's cool. My mother comes to almost every comedy show that I do. Which is, except for, which, this, one. Except for this one. She's not here tonight. Uh, and, and that's nice. It's nice to have someone who like comes out and supports, you know, your the art, whatever you're doing. Uh, but sh when she comes to the show, sh she'll sit the entire show in the front row with her arms crossed, just not laughing, <laughs> just stonewalling the comedians. And at the end, she'll be like, that was okay. <laughs> uh, but I was doing a show recently, and I was doing some new stuff, uh, and I wanted her to check me out, and I was hanging out at like the bar before the show started, uh, and I got a weird text message from my mom uh, that threw me off. I got a text message, I was like, oh, is she letting me know she's close? And I got this text message, and I'm gonna share it with you guys right now. Got this text from my mom that said, don't worry about it, Robbie. You're gonna get a lot of money back in your taxes from Wisconsin. <laughs> weird, because my name's not Robbie. <laughs> so I was like, hmm, not for me, okay. Uh, Resume just chilling out before the show. 20 seconds later, you guys, uh, got a second text from my mom. The plot thickens. Second text from my mom said, come over and run on tread or in park, then take a nap. <laughs> no, not going to Lucas's show either tonight. Just can't handle that. <laughs> yeah. Got a text message from my mom saying she just couldn't handle my comedy, you guys. <laughs> my first impulse was to text her back and like, ah, fuck you, mom, I'm like, ah, fuck you. And I was like, wait, Lucas, you're 30 years old, you got a full beard, you're losing all your hair, you've outgrown the fuck you mom text. <laughs> I was like, let's send her some of back. Send her some of text message back, it's a little bit more mature. So I sent her a text back that said, here's what I literally sent to my mom. I said, ha ha, guess you didn't mean to send me that. Maybe you owe me an apology, wink. <laughs> <laughs> not bad, not bad. And my mom wrote me back, who is this? <laughs> and that's the story of my life, you guys. A text message from my mom that says, who is this? Oh. Pretty sad, pretty sad. Uh, my mom's bad with technology. My dad is also terrible with technology. My dad's like in his 70s now, and he's in that last wave of people just signing up for Facebook. Uh, yeah. And I, I just recently got a friend request from my dad on Facebook. Uh, I was like, friend request, Alan Kaiser. And I was like, okay. <laughs> clicked accept on my dad's uh, Facebook friend request. And when I clicked through to my dad's Facebook profile, you guys, what I saw there was the most depressing profile on Facebook. <laughs> My dad's Facebook profile has three things on it and three things only. His name, Alan Kaiser. Current city, Scottsdale, Arizona. Relationship status, divorced. <laughs> That's it. No list of hobbies, no favorite movies, no picture of his face. After I clicked accept on my dad's friend request, he called me. Because he must have been monitoring. He's like, he called me and he's like, Hey, you accepted my friend request. I'm on Facebook now. <laughs> Maybe I could meet a lady on there. I was like, yeah, Dad, your pitch is real strong. <laughs> What's up, ladies interested in men named Alan Kaiser? Sight unseen? <laughs> I might have noticed by my relationship status that I'm currently available. <laughs> deeply, deeply available. <laughs> I was like, Dad. You gotta, your, your, your profile is way too depressing. You gotta put up something. Put up at least a picture. Put up a picture at least. And he's like, you're right, you're right, I'll put up a picture. So my dad put up a picture of my sister's boyfriend. <laughs> who's a black guy. And I was like, dad, why did you do that? What, what were you thinking? And my dad's response was, that was the only picture I had on my computer. <laughs> Which raises way more questions than it does answers, you guys. Here's something new about me. Uh, I'm seeing a new doctor. I, had, I didn't have health insurance for a long time, but I just started, I just got health insurance, started a new job. Uh, yeah. And uh, my new doctor is cool. Uh, he's a cool guy. He's pretty shy though, which is fine uh, in most situations, uh, except when it came time during my physical, uh, when he checked my testicles. Uh, 
His shyness made things pretty awkward, you guys. Uh, here's what, here's how it went down. Uh, uh, I was like just getting like he was checking my heartbeat. He was checking like whatever my reflexes. Uh, and then at one point he he just looked at me and he was like, "Okay, <laughs> take that in I was like, "Excuse me." He was like, take down your shorts. I was like, "What? Just take your boxer shorts. Take, take off your boxer shorts." And I was like, oh, okay, okay. So I took off my boxer shorts, at which point my doctor turned his back to me and did, and did this. No! You're fine. You're fine. Yeah, he didn't even ask me to cough. He was just like, uh, awkward. Really awkward. Uh, and here's how I chose to break that awkward tension. When he turned around, I looked him dead in his eyes and I went, well, I showed you mine, now you show me yours. <laughs> Keep in mind, my underwear is still around my ankles. <laughs> my doctor did not laugh at that joke, you guys. He did not find that funny. The awkwardness persisted. Uh, there were a few seconds that passed by. It was awkward. And I broke that awkwardness by going, uh, I'm sorry, doctor. I was just kidding around, uh, I'm a comedian. <laughs> to which my doctor responded by pulling my boxer shorts up for me, <laughs> looking me in the eyes and going, good luck with your career. <laughs> the best part about that is that, that that's not the first time something like that's happened to me, you guys. I pulled a similar uh, a thing at the dentist office like two months ago. Uh, I was getting a filling put in in my, in my mouth, uh, and the doctor put the Nova, or the dentist put the Novocaine in my mouth, he gave me a shot, and he goes, let me know if you can feel anything. To which I responded with, the only thing I can feel is in my pants. Oh, no. <laughs> but I had Novocaine in my mouth, and my mouth was completely numb, so what I actually said was, and I had hell in my hand. <laughs> which freaked out my dentist, you guys, because it was, it was his job to make sure that I couldn't feel anything, right? So he was like, what did you say? What did you say? And I was like, and he was like, what? I was like, never mind, never mind. He's like, no, not never mind. So he grabbed a piece of paper and a pen and said, write it down, write it down. So I wrote down, the only thing I can feel is in my pants. And that piece of paper is now known as Exhibit B in my Aetna Dental Insurance Incident Report, you guys. Not allowed to go back to that dentist. All right, guys, that's my time. Thank you very much.